Chapter Ten of Bob's A Girl Detective. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Lynn Thompson. Bob's A Girl Detective by Grace May North. Chapter Ten. It was three o'clock in the afternoon when Bob's entered the musty bookshop on the east side and found the place unoccupied. However, the tinkling of a bell sounded in the back room, and the little old man shuffled in. His expression was troubled, and when Roberta asked for his invalid wife, he replied that she wasn't so well. "'Poor Marlitta,' he said, and there was infinite tenderness in his voice. "'She's yearning to go back to the home country where our children are, and their children, and the doctor thinks it might make her strong once again to be there, but the voyage costs money,' and Marlita would rather die here than not go honest. The old man seemed to be overcome with emotion. Then suddenly recalling his customer's errand, he shuffled away to procure the package of detective stories for which he had called. During his absence, Roberta went back of the counter, reached for a book on an upper shelf, and, while so doing, dislodged several others that tumbled about her, revealing, as though it had been hidden in the dark recess back of them, the rare book, which that morning had been taken from the Queerwitz antique shop. That, then, was what the old man meant when he said that his Marlitta would not go unless she could go honest. The girl quickly replaced the books and then stood deep in thought. What could she do? What should she do? She knew that the gentle bookseller had taken the rare volume merely to save the life of the one dearest to him. When he returned with the package, the girl heard herself asking, But you... If your Marlitta went to the home country, would you not be very lonely? There was infinite sadness in the faded eyes, and yet, too, there was something else, a light from the soul that true sacrifice brings. Ah, that I also might go, he said. Then, with a gesture that included all of the small dark shop, he added, but these old books are all I have, and they do not sell. At that moment, Roberta recalled the name of Lionel Van Loon, who, as Miss Peerwinkle had assured her, would pay one thousand dollars for the rare book and its mate. For a thoughtful moment the girls gazed at the lilac, then decided to tell the little old man all that she knew. At first she regretted this decision when she saw the frightened expression on his gentle, childlike face, but she hastened to assure him that she only wanted to help him, and so she was asking him to send the stolen book back to the antique shop by mail. When this had been done, Roberta, returning from the corner post-box, found the old man gazing sadly at another volume, which the girl instantly knew was the prized mate of the one she had just mailed. "'It's no use without the other,' the bookseller told her, "'and Mr. Queerwitz wouldn't pay what it's worth. He never does. He crowds the poor man to the wall and then crushes him.' "'I have a plan,' the girl told him. "'Will you trust me with this book for a little while?' trust her who would not for reply the old man held his treasure toward her heaven bless you was all that he said it was four o'clock when bobs descended from a taxicab and mounted the steps of a handsome brownstone mansion on riverside drive mr van loon was at home and being a most kindly old gentleman and accustomed to receiving all manner of persons he welcomed roberta into his wonderful library listened courteously at first, but with growing interest, when he realized that this radiant girl had a book to sell, which he believed to be both rare and valuable. The eyes of the cultured gentleman plainly revealed his great joy when he actually saw the long-sought first volume. "'My dear young lady,' he said, "'you cannot know what it means to me to be able to obtain that book. I know where I can find its mate, and so, I assure you, I will purchase it, the price being he paused inquiringly roberta heard as though it was someone else speaking her own voice saying would one thousand dollars be too much mr van loon to a man whose hobby was collecting books and who was many times a millionaire it was not too much will you have cash or a check he inquired cash if you please it was six o'clock when bobs handed the money to the overjoyed bookseller who could not thank her enough. 
The old woman again was by the window, and she smiled happily as she listened to the words of the girl that fairly tumbled over each other in their eagerness to be spoken. Then reaching out a frail hand to her good man, and looking at him with a light in her eyes that Bob's would never forget, she said, "'Caleb, now we can both go home to our children.' Roberta promised to return the following day to help them prepare for the voyage. She was turning away when the little woman called to her. "'I want you to have my lilac,' she said, and she held the blossoming spray toward the girl. It was half-past six when Bob's reached home. Gloria was watching for her rather anxiously, but it was not until they were gathered about the fireplace for the evening that Bob's told her story. "'Here endeth my experience as a detective,' she concluded. But Roberta was mistaken. End of chapter 10